Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. So today, first, uh, I want to talk about longevity. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the ability of nation-states to support another nation state in the time of war in a time of war currently ukraine has the full backing of the united states which is then applying pressure to european powers to also back the ukrainians so again as we speak right now, that support to continue to back the Ukrainians is very high. Now, early in the war, in terms of the Ukrainians mobilizing and having the ability to create forces, to expand its armed forces, to repel the initial Russian onslaught. They were able to do that, especially in areas near Kiev and in the northern quadrant of the conflict, as, uh, as seen here by this uh, area in green where the Russians were at bef before, Chernihiv, uh, areas uh, to the north, northeast, areas to the west of the Dnieper River. Now, <clears throat> What is happening now in Ukraine? Are, is the Ukrainian military still receiving the same kind of support from the population in terms of individuals volunteering to serve on the front line? And to answer that question, you have to look at casualty rates. The casualty rates now for the Ukrainians are much higher than they were in the earlier stages of the conflict when the Russians were on the offensive. The Ukrainians were still taking large numbers of casualties, but nothing like the casualties the Ukrainians have taken since around that June-July time frame. The casualty uptick has gone through the roof in the last few months for the Ukrainians now that they've been on this uh, this offensive operation. We saw the first vestiges of high amounts of casualties uh, as they were trying to press into Kherson, especially this northeastern quadrant. Lots of casualties. And then the, the Russians decided to do a tactical withdrawal from this area. Now in the northeast quadrant, during the uh, Kharkov offensive, a little different. We didn't see as many Ukrainian casualties. But fast forward to where we're at now, especially in the southern sector of the conflict, uh, massive amounts of casualties. And that is having an effect on the Ukrainian population. We are now getting into generational war. What do I mean by that? Well, Individuals who are 17 years old are going to be turning 18 years old. So once you cross that one year and you're looking at two years, three years, and in all probability this conflict is going to last between two and four years, possibly longer. And the longer the conflict lasts, the more it benefits the Russian side. The Russians have the manpower and they have the industry to continue fighting the war. The Ukrainians, on the other hand, are having difficulties in supplying itself with ammunition and the tools of which to fight the war. Compounding that, where the Ukrainians were having a plethora of volunteers wanting to join the Ukrainian military, that is now turning. That is now changing. We are not seeing the same types of uh, massive amounts of volunteers joining the Ukrainian military. It's not happening. Furthermore, 
parents of Ukrainian prospective service members are very concerned about the high casualty rates. As you know, uh, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, sacked all of his uh, higher-ranking recruiting personnel within the military. He did that because there is widespread corruption inside of Ukraine. Lots of individuals are paying off not to be conscripted into the military. We have seen quite literally millions, millions of fighting age males flee Ukraine towards Western Europe. And Western Europe is is more than happy to take these persons as they become cheap, viable labor for Western Europe. But that has depleted the manpower pool in Ukraine as the Ukrainians start to suffer these dramatic casualty rates. So if you look at the beginning of the war, the first six months of the war, and how the Ukrainian military mobilized, they did a a very good job of that. But where they're at now, and since they've launched these offensives and taken all these casualties, that has changed. And it has changed quite a bit. 